You're watching Eagle News America. I'm Anna Kui in Las Vegas. Health officials in Canada warn of a third wave of COVID-19 caused by the variants and plead for extra vigilance in the fight against it. In Edmonton, Bureau Chief Thomas Likeness is with us tonight with the details. Thomas? Thank you, Anna. Well, that's definitely something we did not want to hear from our health officials. You know, Canada's top doctor, her name's Dr. Teresa Tam. She heads up the Public Health Service. Dr. Tam is warning about a third wave of the coronavirus, and she says this one will be led by variants of the original virus. Now, variants have been identified in all of Canada's 10 provinces, and in many, there's evidence of community spread of them. Before, it was just a matter of all right, it was, the, the outbreak was linked to somebody who had been to another country where that variant originated. Now it's starting to spread through the community, and that's where, where people are becoming alarmed. Tam is calling for extra vigilance. She says now is not the time to ease up on res, res, restrictions, and she's not alone in ringing the warning bells. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says, yeah, yeah, we've made some progress. He says, yes, case numbers are dropping, but... You're probably uh, watching the news these days attentively as everyone is and uh, watching the positive sign of the cases going down across the country. That is uh, a good step in the right direction. But we also know at the same time the new variants that are more communicable, uh, more easily transmitted, are increasingly out there. So we need to stay careful. Nobody wants a third wave to start, particularly not one comprised of new, more communicable vari uh, variants that uh, can cause real challenges. So this warning from the Prime Minister Trudeau says danger still lurks. I think everyone understands that we need to be extra vigilant uh, as we uh, enter this phase of potential spread of these new variants. That's why things like contact tracing, uh, rapid testing, the, um, uh, the, the app, uh, and continued uh, careful choices by all Canadians not to gather and to keep distances uh, are our best chance of getting through in the best case possible, best way possible to uh, the uh, mass vaccinations that are coming in the coming months. Now, in our, our far most eastern province, the province of Newfoundland and Labrador, it's an island-like province. They were supposed to have an election on Saturday, but in-person voting was suspended because of an outbreak. Dr. Janice Fitzgerald, the province's chief medical officer of health, is blaming the spike in new cases on a variant of the virus. The 117 variant that was first recognized in the UK is the COVID strain responsible for the for this outbreak in our province. We know that this variant spreads faster and easier. It is estimated to be 70% more transmissible than the original COVID strain, which explains the rapid explosion of cases this week. Fitzgerald says there's a lot of unknowns about the variant. Unknown is whether the variant strain causes more or less severe illness than the original strain. And while the vast majority of cases in our province ha have been mild or even had no symptoms, this could be because most of the affected individuals are young. Our greatest concern is how this variant could impact seniors, particularly those in congregate living facilities. Also concerned is the Chief Medical Officer of Health for British Columbia, Dr. Bonnie Henry, worries they may, the variants may spread from neighboring Alberta, where more than 100 cases have been reported. Not only from um, Alberta, uh, from Ontario, there's a, a considerably higher rate in some areas of Ontario as well, and we know that there's still travel back and forth. It comes back to, you know, the fundamental thing that we know about this virus. It's transmitted between people, and when we inadvertently or not, uh, when we travel, we take the risk that we have with us, and we pick up the risk from where we're going and bring it home with us. Prevention right now is our only weapon in the battle against the pandemic until enough of us are immunized. But what about the future? How often will we have to be immunized? No definitive answer on that yet. But Dr. Henry thinks COVID may be with us for a long time. I, I think the way this virus has been shown to change, it, the mutations are slower than what we see with uh, influenza and some of the other respiratory viruses. Um, I think 
there's a growing sense from most of us that we're going to see it as a recurring respiratory virus in the respiratory season, so fall and winter for us um, over the coming years. But whether we have enough immunity that it's not going to cause these explosive outbreaks and uh, lead to hospitalization and overwhelming of healthcare systems as we've seen in this past year. Um, we, we hope that that's not going to happen, that things will, will settle down as immunity increases. And it may um, change to become uh, a more um, benign respiratory virus like we've seen with some of the other coronaviruses uh, over the years. Not what we really wanted to hear, was it? But, you know, we'll adapt. And while we do that, I wish you all good health. In Edmonton, Canada, Thomas I. Likeness, Eagle News. We live in interesting times. Back to you, Anna. Thank you, Thomas, for that report. You know, very concerning indeed to hear about a possible third wave. And like you mentioned, that's not what, you know, what anyone, any one of us would want to hear, right? Um, what's been the, the response from the public with all these warnings from these uh, health officials? as well as uh, Justin Trudeau. Again, uh, people are kind of split. You, you, you've got those suffering from a great deal of COVID fact, uh, fatigue that just wants to get on with life, but you got about half the population who, who are actually lobbying the government and, and, and saying, no, let's, let's not put our foot on the brake. Let's, let's keep the restrictions for now. Uh, they, they look to countries like uh, Australia and New Zealand. Uh, you get a half a dozen cases, they lock down a city there. And, and, and they're saying maybe we should be aiming for zero cases in Canada. I don't know how realistic that would be. Uh, but uh, definitely there's a large segment of the public that certainly supports more lockdown. Yes, Tom, as you mentioned, I mean, it, it seems that the new variants of the virus have become quite a concern in Europe, and they, and they acted uh, pretty quickly. Well, right? the variants are, yeah, that's what's been driving the new outbreaks in Europe, particularly in England. Of, of course, that's where the, the UK variant uh, uh, originated. But I was just reading today that hospitals in France have been told to move into the crisis mode because of a possible surge in coronavirus cases caused by variants. In the United Kingdom, this is really disturbing. Health officials have identified two more new variants. And it was a variant that was responsible for the first wave of outbreaks that swept through the UK, if you recall. Uh, other parts of Europe have similar concerns. The World Health Organization last week again, warning that new variants pose a threat. We're still not sure how effective the vaccines will be or whether the virus has managed to outwit those inoculants. So. You know, this is far from over. Yes, absolutely, Thomas. Hopefully the warnings, you know, will uh, resonate with with the public and, and just, as you mentioned, prevention. Prevention is key. You mentioned France. I mean, I read that too. You know, they're, they're seeing 25% of new cases are from that UK variant. And then um, in Toronto, I, uh, I, I read about a, one case of the, uh, the one from Brazil, the Brazil variant. Uh, they have identified there. In, 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 in that same province where Toronto uh, is, uh, the province of Ontario, the, the Nigerian uh, variant has, uh, has popped up there. They've actually got four different variants in Ontario, and they were dealing and, and are still dealing with a fairly large outbreak from the original virus. So uh, it, it, it's a real mess there, Anna. Well, Thomas, continue to be safe. Thank you again for joining us tonight. Always a pleasure to have you on. And like I said, stay safe. You too, Anna. Thank you. Thank you.